So I, I put Brother David on a schedule because if I didn't, I'd forget him. And I forgot him a couple times on that schedule. But I like to preach so much, I don't want to share. <laughs> huh? I like to teach and preach, but I'm, I'm going to do better. I, re, I remember when you got that itch, and, and the Lord just really laid it on me that I needed to give Brother Johnny some time, and I appreciate him teaching the class, and, and I'm going to do better. I'm going to teach you tonight, and I'm not going to keep you a long time, and that's one of the reasons why that I, I went ahead and, and shared a little bit with Brother Johnny tonight. I'm going to talk about fasting from a whole new perspective, I hope. Fasting is abstinence from food or drink for a long or a short or period. Fasting is mentioned throughout the Bible. In the Old Testament, when you read this phrase, to afflict the soul, that's another way of saying they fasted. Fasting was implemented by God through Moses on the Day of Atonement. They were to be no eating or drinking from evening of one day to the evening of the next day, nor were they to work during that day, but everything was be to, to everything that they did as a matter of habit was to be sacrificed, was to be sacrificed on the day of atonement. Fasting was practiced by various people for various reasons throughout Scripture. Moses, Elijah, David, Esther, and Mordecai, and Daniel, to name a few, they fasted. And fasting sometimes was a partial fast, as in Daniel's case, or, or a total fast, depending upon the length of the fast. Religious fasting, all fasting was not religious fasting. Sometimes it was a sign of mourning, a sign of mourning at the death of a loved one. But it's also a sign of mourning for sin, with the objective of holding back divine wrath or winning divine compassion. In the Old Testament, they felt like if they fasted, that it was saying something to God. Now, fast were not just religious in nature, as I said, but folks fasted for a period of time after a loved one passed. Now, there are, there are not many references to fasting in the Gospels, but what is said shows that fasting was a part of life uh, for those who desired to lead an especially religious life. If you wanted to draw closer to God, you were to fasting was to be a part of your everyday life. Anna, who was a prophetess to whom Jesus was taken, shortly after his birth was described as one who served God with prayers and fastings night and day. Remember the Pharisee that was, that was standing there next to the public and praying, Brother David, and, and the Pharisee said, I thank the Lord I'm not like this rascal. But then he began to tell his qualifications, Brother Terry, and one of them was that he fasted twice a week. Jesus Christ himself fasted 40 days before and during his trial in the wilderness. And in Matthew chapter number 6, Jesus addresses fasting while preaching the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 6, 16 through 18. Help me there, Brother David. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, it is evident from his very first words. Give me number Back to number 16, if you would, brother. It's very evident from Jesus' first words of 16 and also his first words of 17. Moreover, when ye fast, it appears from Jesus' first words that fasting is to be considered an elementary part of a disciple of Jesus. He didn't say if you fast. He said when you fast. And then 17, he says, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine hand and wash thy face so folks can't tell you're fasting. There are things to avoid when fasting. 
primarily making a big to-do about it, making a big deal about it. It's not a good idea to plan on fasting or be in the middle of a fast and go to work and tell everybody, don't eat your lunch in front of me because I'm fasting today. In the Bible days, Brother David, they are really bad about not taking a bath, not shaving, not fixing their hair, putting on a big to-do about fasting. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you tonight a, a, a whole new, <coughs> excuse me, aspect of fasting, but I think we've established right here without moving any further that if you're going to be a Christian and you're going to pursue a deeper relationship with God, fasting is going to play a role in it. Notice he said, thy father which seeth in secret shall reward you openly. In Matthew 9, Mark 2, and Luke 5, the Pharisees questioned Jesus about the disciples' apparent lack of fasting. Brother Pete, they said, John's disciples fasted, and we fast, but we're aware that the disciples don't fast. That's Jesus' 12 disciples. Now, the reason for this question is not so much of uh, whether they should do it or not, but it's the fact that the Pharisees did, and they're trying to discredit Jesus and his followers at doing away with such an important practice regarding the law. And then there are two references. I want you to please start following me real closely right here, if you would. There are two references in Mark 7, I mean Matthew 17 and Mark number 9, when a man brings his son who's devil possessed to Jesus. And he said, I asked your disciples, could they cast out the devil? They couldn't do it. Then the Lord cast the devil out. The disciples said, why couldn't we do it? The Lord said, because of your unbelief, your lack of faith. And then he said, this kind cometh not but by prayer and fasting. Matthew 17 and Mark chapter 9. It's not the power that comes from fasting but it's the faith that comes from fasting. It's faith in the Lord that comes by prayer and fasting. Now, many scholars and theologians, Brother Roger and I talked about this the other day, believe that these portions of Scripture where it says these things come by prayer and fasting are a corrupted text, meaning that they were added at a later date. They do not believe that it was in the original text. However, you take Jesus' earlier comments regarding fasting, regarding one's behavior when fasting, and you add that to these comments, along with where I'm about to take you in Scripture now, we can see that there is a plan of God. There is a plan of God. Everybody say amen. amen. That there is a plan of God that cannot be seen as long as you're full of yourself. There is a plan of God, not just for you, but for your church, for your family, maybe for your job. There is a plan of God for you that cannot be determined looking through fleshly eyes. It cannot be seen until the flesh is put under subjection which is the purpose of fasting, self-denial, denying yourself. And when you deny yourself, you win the battle of self, and then the Spirit can have room to work in your life. Isaiah 58 and 1, Brother David. Isaiah 58 and 1. The Lord speaks to Isaiah, and I want you to notice what he says. Cry aloud. That means really loud. Spare not. Don't be afraid to say anything. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Brother Doyle, there's urgency in the word of the Lord. There is a urge, strong urgency for, to the prophet Isaiah, and he says, you are to show them what they're doing wrong. Now, before you get defensive, 
That's not necessarily my intention tonight. But through showing you the wrong way, we are given the right way, and it's ultimately to see the plan of God come to pass. 58 and 2, Brother David, Isaiah 58 and 2 says, Yet, remember, tell them what they're doing wrong. Let me back up and read it. Lift up your voice and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Verse 2, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Now, it sounds to me like, Brother David, put number one up there for me again real quick. It sounds to me like, look here, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. That's tell them what they're doing wrong and the house of Jacob their sins. And then the next verse. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. That sounds to me like he's talking to two different groups of people. Huh? Huh? Right? Or the meaning here, if you if you combine it with verse number one, is the same as the Lord gives in the New Testament, it's also in Isaiah, which says, They draw nigh to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They are very zealous. Verse 2 is up there. They are very zealous. They're very excited. They're very diligent and very fervent in doing the outward things of what's considered to be religious. They are very, very diligent to put on a good show. But they lack in the element to be pleasing to God because what did the Lord tell Samuel when he walked into Jesse's backyard? What would you say, Brother Robbie? The Lord doesn't look on the outward appearance, but he's looking at the heart. We've got to come to that realization. It's what's on the inside of me that makes a difference to the Lord. But what's on the inside manifests itself on the outside as opposed to the other way. I don't care what you dress like, what you look like, what you act like, what you don't watch, what you don't say, or where you don't go. If your heart's not right with God, none of that stuff amounts to a hill of beans. That's why we've got to get totally away. Am I blowing y'all out tonight? I'm blowing myself out. We have got to get away from, from making people think, and I know I've beat this dead horse, but we've got to get away from people thinking that they've got to check off a list of rules before they come to church here. I believe in holiness, Brother McKinney. I believe it. I believe that men ought to look like men and women like women. All of the principles, I believe them. But I don't believe that people need to conform to a certain way of thinking before they come to God. If you do it that way, it's self-righteousness. How in the world did I go from fasting to this? You just wait and see. Isaiah 58 and 3. Here's a defining characteristic to them. This is what has spoke to them or has spoke to the Lord of their true character. Get this. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? Remember, that means to fast. And thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Here's what they're saying to the Lord, to the prophet. We've been fasting and you didn't notice. Now look at here. If 
I do this and this and this and this and this, you better do something for me. That's what they're saying, Brother Pete. We fasted and you didn't see it. How do they know he didn't? Where are they coming from that he didn't see it? Because what they wanted to happen ain't happening. There's an ideology and it was prevalent or prevalent at that time and it is now that because we do so much good stuff, we feel like God is obligated to bless us. If I do so much good, then he's un under some sort of obligation. In this case, it's because we fasted. Now get this. The Lord tells them, behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. The fasting of the day of atonement, now again, you got to see this. The fasting of the day of the atonement was to be a fast not only from food, but from work as well. Now keep that in mind for later. But apparently, they were continuing to work. So Brother Robbie, they observed the part of the fast that was convenient for them that truly cost them nothing but continued to do that which profited them something. Fasting, you just don't eat for a little bit or drink or whatever the case may be. But if you don't go to work, well, what happens if you don't go to work? You don't get paid. But hold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Fifty-eight and four. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Now they were fasting, which is no eating or no drinking, to try to be more religious. And they were continuing to quarrel and fight, arguing both verbally and physically amongst each other, as if, you are recording this, aren't you? Good. Because I'm going to listen to it and find out what I did wrong. They are continuing. They fast. Okay. But they're continuing to squabble and to quarrel and, and to, 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 when you get in a fight, means that you're trying to submit your, to, to not submit, you're trying to lord your will over somebody else's. They felt like as if their religious act of fasting, I want you to hear me right now, as if their religious act of fasting gave them a pass on how to treat folks. You can't expect, the Bible said, you cannot expect to operate this way and to have your voice to be heard in heaven. You cannot, my God have mercy. You cannot pick and choose which parts of a disciple you're going to be. And lay the other parts aside and still be pleasing to God. You either are or you aren't. You are either in or you're out. That'd be like Brother Johnny, them trying to ride the side of the boat up. See, if the, you, you can't hang on, get out and hang on to the boat, Brother David. He said, stay in the boat. He told Rahab and her family, stay in the house. All right, when the Lord wants you to do something, he told Noah and his family, get in the boat. Okay, it's the Lord, yes, the Lord works in black and white. And he either wants all of you or he don't want none of you. Uh -huh. 
Isaiah 58 and 5. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? Do you think that your religious actions are what I've chosen for you? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Do you believe that the type of fast you are observing would be something I designed? And I, the, the, the sackcloth and ash deal is sometimes they would spread out sackcloth. They would strip themselves down to, to gird them up with a little bit of sackcloth, spread ashes all over the ground, and waller around in it as a symbol of, of them afflicting themselves. Do you believe that the type of fast you are observing would be something I designed? Listen, the Lord does nothing. Nothing the Lord does is designed to keep you down. Nothing the Lord does is designed to hurt you. If the Lord wants you to do something, it's for your good. Do you think that a time of fasting paves the way for you to act religious or make you feel religious on a particular day without regarding the rest of your days. Do you see that? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? They would be religious on Sunday. That would apply to us coming, someone going to church on Sunday, acting a certain way, and truly feeling that they... Listen, we're not talking in this case about people that are just consciously... I've got to get this out there. People that are just cons consciously being hypocrites. That's not we're ta what we're talking about. But we're talking about people that have justified in their mind that a certain religious act cancels out a bad one. Does that make sense? If I fulfill my religious obligation for Sundays and Wednesdays, then the rest of the day it evens itself out. That's what they were doing. They were being religious on the fast day and then living like the devil the rest of the time. Isaiah 58 and 6. When I read this passage of Scripture, keep in mind now, you are not, and I, I got to make this plain, you are not twisting God's arm when you fast. You are not telling him, now I fasted, now you do this. Fasting, denying yourself anything, including work, Brother David, it says in the Bible, and something else that I can't talk about because there's children out here. But it's in there too. Defraud ye not one another except for a time of fasting. Okay, there are different things we deny ourselves that our body wants, and it's not just all food. Even though fast does refer to food, the word fast. What do you eat the first meal in the morning? Break it down into two words. Break fast. That means you fasted while you've been asleep all night, and then the morning you break it. All right, but anything you do with the express intent to deny yourself to be more closer to the Lord falls under the category of fast. Verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? It's a rhetorical question, implying that they were not aware of the reason for fasting or the benefits. The irony is that the benefits of living for God are only learned through practical application. 
The benefits of receiving the things that God wants are only given through obedience to his word by faith. I'm coming just as fast as I can. The Lord designed fasting as an avenue through which he could operate in us to his fullness. The Lord designed fasting. He said, is not this the fast that I have chosen? It was given by God. There are things the Lord There are things the Lord wants to do in my life and in your life that he has been unable to do because there's too much of me in the way. You say, well, I'm not talking about sinning. I'm not talking about going out there and living like the devil necessarily. But I'm talking about the flesh getting in the way. And the only way for us to get the flesh out of the way is to deny it. It's the only way. We deny the flesh. And the Lord chose this fast. You can find it in Leviticus chapter number 16 when they were told to fast on the day of atonement. There are benefits that are only learned through application through doing it. And less of the flesh equals more of the spirit. Here's the plan. Is this is the fast I've chosen. To loose the bands of wickedness. To destroy the bands or hindrances of sin. Revelation, God help me. Revelation, revealing to you, revealing to you the changes that you need to make in your life in order to get where you want to be in God. Revealing, and that only comes when we deny ourselves. How many times have you started to do something for God? Something simple as committing to 30 minutes or an hour of prayer or to fast a meal or to do something good for somebody and something you wanted to do got in the way. Come on now. I know I'm not the only heathen in here. Okay, we've got to get our flesh out of the way. Why do you think the Lord moves so good on the weekend? Because we ain't been working all day. If I fall out in a minute, I know I got some nurses to give me mouth to mouth, but y'all about to kill me tonight. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. The Lord has got, it's my job. It's my responsibility as the pastor of this church. Soon as you start calling, and and we we called a fast Monday night. I didn't do it Sunday night. I called it Monday night at prayer meeting. But how often do you see when you call a fast, and I've seen it happen a million times, and please understand I'm not throwing stones. Sometimes there are things that's serious. But before you can even get people to raise their hand, 12 have raised it. Why they can't? Say, well, I can't fast from eating. You can fast from drinking Coca-Cola or Diet Coke or iced tea or, or whatever it is that brings you pleasure. If you eat a bowl of Cheerios before you go to bed every night, if you give that up to draw closer to the Lord with a pure heart and the right intentions, the Lord's going to blow your mind the things that he will reveal about you in your life. And not only that, the benefits that other people will receive as you being able to look into their life. You say, well, I don't know about that. I'm about to prove it to you. That you fasting will make you more in tune to the needs of other people. To loose the bands of wickedness. The very first thing, anything the Lord wants to do in our life, we got to make sure sin's out of the way. To destroy the bands or hindrances of sin. 
to make revelation of changes that need to be made in our life will result in the bands, the bands of guilt and consequences of our bad behavior to be loosened, to be gone off of us. The first step you do as you draw closer to the Lord is you begin to make corrections in your life that the Lord's been trying to do but can't do because of your own desire. Did that make sense? And then he said, to undo the heavy burdens. I guess, and I, I'm going to go on to finish this, but I guess the bottom line is, is how bad do you really want something from God? How bad? To undo the heavy burdens. To undo ungodly commitments. Things we have in, embedded ourselves in that have resulted in heavy burdens. And heavy burdens hinder progress. The trappings, we're talking about the trappings that sinful living and bad decisions uh, have placed upon us. Uh, even situations, sometimes we've been taking advantage of things. Sometimes we've been tricked into doing things. Uh, and But like a pack animal, that the, the pack is being taken off the back of a donkey or a camel. But fasting will loose you from those heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. This is referring to those who have, hear me right now, those who have been oppressed. How many know what oppressed means? How many don't know what oppressed means? How many too scared to raise their hand and look like a dummy? <laughs> oppressed means pressed down, beaten down. You feel like you can't move. You feel like you can't breathe. I don't have claustrophobia anymore, but sometimes, Brother Johnny, we would be underneath the house or something, and I'd get to thinking about it and feel like everything closing in on me, and you panic and you get scared. But that's what happens with some situations in life that we have gotten ourselves into, whether before we came to the Lord or after. And you become oppressed. It, it feels like you can't, you can't go. Debt will do that to people. Bad financial decisions uh, to those who have been oppressed spiritually, financially, and socially. Whether it be in a spiritual thing or when you pray, you just... God, help me right now. When you pray, you just don't really feel like you're getting anywhere. When you, when you, 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 you put your check in the bank and you pay your tithes and you're giving the offering and it still seems like that you're broke. Or socially, it's like you can't keep friends or you can't do any interaction. You feel all alone. He said, and to let the oppressed go free. And that you break. And that you break every yoke. Somebody describe a yoke to me. A yoke is never a yoke of one. But it is designed for two to be in it. My goodness gracious. Breaking the yoke of tradition and tyranny. Inferring that the only yoke we are to wear is to be yoked together with Jesus Christ. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly at heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. I talked to somebody the other night. Breaking free from the yoke uh, means breaking free from the yoke of addiction. Breaking free from the yoke of affliction. How many of you feel like you'd like to do something for God, but there's a yoke around your neck uh, and another yoke here? There's addiction, or there's affliction, or there's other something that, that you just can't seem to get rid of. That's why I don't buy that baloney. That once you're an addict, you're always an addict. He that the Son is set free is free indeed. Anything, Brother David, thank you. Anything that you are bound to, anything that you can't get free of, how many of you want to do something great for God, but there's still like a ball and chain around you from some circumstance in your life? 
And that you break, oh, I love it. And that you break every yoke. There's nothing that hinders you, slows you down, or hurts you that the Lord cannot destroy. But His methods are revealed to us. His plan is revealed to us when we decrease, when we deny ourselves things we want. I dare say there are probably none among us that couldn't stand to go without a meal or two. But you say you're going to fast and you'll starve to death. You smell a cow patty and you think it's a T-bone steak. We got to know that what, God help me right now. Why do you think when you make up your mind to go pray that a million things will get in your way? Why? Why is that? Because the benefits to it are victory and overcoming. Why is it that it's so hard to fast? Tell yourself, if you normally get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, tell yourself, I'm going to start getting up an hour early and pray. Hey, can't a forklift pry you out of bed? Oh, I know I'm probably done going over. I didn't intend to. But here's, we're going to make it to heaven. And we're going to have revival. And it's going to be not because of me, but because of men and women like each of you that buy into this and believe it. And we begin to fast. And we begin to pray. And we begin to read our Bibles. And all of that stuff is happening. People are obeying Scripture. Sister Eloise came in here Monday night and she just left the dollar store where she laid hands on somebody and prayed for him in the store. Is that not true? That's what we got to do, saints of God, is we got to begin to obey what thus saith the word of the Lord. Amen. Fasting is not to make your day miserable. Fasting is to open you up, to set you free. Brother Larry Booker preached a message. I've never heard it. I've just heard it referenced. But it's called being set free from what's in it for me. Being set free. Isaiah 58 and 7. Oh, I'm not, I'm not even over yet. My goodness. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. When you get the flesh under subjection, then the Holy Ghost can begin to work through you. Remember what the Bible says, Matthew chapter 25. Separating the sheep and the goats. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. That's Jesus talking to the people. When I was cold, you gave me a cloak. They said, rightfully so, Lord, we never done none of that stuff for you. He said, but when you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. In our own cloud of self-serving life, how many people have we passed on a daily basis that the Lord did desire to do something in their life and desire to use us to do it. Not because we're bad. Not because we're bad. Not because we're mean. Not because we're ugly. God forbid that a Holy Ghost filled person would ever be ugly to somebody on purpose. Knock him out, John. That's what I feel like right now. God forbid. But sometimes I'm the world's worst. Some of you all think I'm mad all the time. I'm not. My mind don't stop. I grew up my whole life with people thinking my daddy was mean all the time. He wasn't. But what I've got to do, Brother Robbie, is I've got to stop being so absorbed with me. And 
God help me. The only way I can do it is fast. How many of you realize the chicken don't run from you on fast day? It ain't never going to be easy. But it's war. We're in a fight. Not only for our lives, but for the lives of others. Brother Doyle told me tonight, he's at the the dollar store. He strikes up a conversation with the lady. She's just lost her son and her husband too, is that right? She's, She's just in mourning, he said. Hey, come go to church with me. I go to church right down there by the park. Yeah, yes, I am. I'm saying that we got to be fasters and we got to do it regularly. You don't do it as a cloak of your religiousness. You don't go, hey, I just got to let you know, by the way, I'm fasting today. In case you were going to take me out and buy me some food, but if you want to do it tomorrow, that'll be all right because I ain't fasting tomorrow. The scripture tells of the benefits that will come available to others as a result of you fasting or as you decreasing. As we conquer our flesh, we will become more aware of the needs of others. And by doing so, we will fulfill the law of Jesus Christ. The freedom that we receive in verse 6 is to free us far doing the work of verse 7. Loosing us from satisfying self or even focusing on ourself to becoming more like Jesus. 58 and 8, and I'm done. Then, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re-reward or rear guard. Thy light as opposed to the darkness. of Somebody stay with me right now. I'm about to be done. But listen to this. Your light shall break forth as the morning. The freshness of a brand new day. After you begin to walk in the changes that the Lord desires to make in your life or my life, that we cannot see because we're so full of me. And thine health, and thine health shall come. That's not speaking of natural health, but of spiritual health. And there will be two primary results from living a healed life. Number one, your righteousness shall go before thee. The future holds the promise of right living. Your actions that are pleasing to God will become your way of living. No longer will it be one step forward and two steps back, but it will be a continual going forward in the will and the purpose of God. And the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. I want you to think about this just for a minute. I'm closing. If going ahead is going to be righteous, there is only, my Lord, somebody hear me right now. Somebody hear me in this place right now. Is going ahead is going to be righteous living, righteous actions, doing that which is pleasing to the Lord, there is only one place that the devil can attack you from. From your past. And, my Lord, help me right now. And when we begin to walk in the fulfillment of the Lord, searching for an opportunity to do good things for God, searching for opportunity to be righteous before the Lord, The enemy who is going to try to attack you. Because Brother Johnny, he is the accuser of the brethren. And Brother Pete, if my mistakes 
and my sin become less and less and less. He has nothing to use on me but my past. And as my Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And as I walk in the fear of the Lord and the respect of the responsibility that he's given me, he will guard my back. And when the devil comes rushing with my past, <coughs> before he can even get to me, Brother McKinney, he's going to run into the old rugged cross. All of my sins are truly covered by the blood. And the glory of the Lord. Think about that just for a minute. Come on, think about it. I know from Isaiah, for all have sinned and come short of, here's where we're going, with denial of self. When we deny ourselves, when we deny our flesh, that is only when we can be perfected. We can be perfected. Say, well, does that mean we can't never mess up again? You know what? I believe that if we'll draw close enough to the Lord, that we won't mess up. We have given people a crutch for so long. Nobody's perfect. Everybody's human. Everybody makes mistakes. Well, you know what? I want to get to the point. I don't like doing that. Say, oh, you're preaching we got to be perfect. No, I'm not. How, how many in here, you enjoy, you know, proving yourself right? I knew I was no good. I knew I was going to mess up. There is a plan, Brother Pete. There is a plan in place. You listen to me right now, and I'm closing. But 2 Timothy chapter number 4. Paul was about to die, Brother Robbie. Very quickly, they're going to cut his head off. Nero did. Nero beheaded Rome, uh, Paul at Rome. When Paul was saying his goodbyes, he wasn't repenting. He said, I fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. And next, coming up, is a crown of righteousness, which, my Lord, have mercy, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give. And then the beautiful part, but not to me only. Not to me only. Let's stand. But unto all them also that love his appearing. The thing is, you say, well, I didn't know fasting did all of that. It's not all about fasting. It's all about the big picture. It's all about the big picture. Is I've, got to, I've got to know what God wants. What, what Garrison told me the other day, well, he thinks he can whoop me now, which all of y'all know that's nuts. <laughs> it really is nuts. But I told him I slammed him here a while back. And you know what he said? Ever, ever blind squirrel finds an acorn once in a while. <laughs> I don't think we need to live for God like that. Like that, like we sneak up on a blessing. Like we sneak up on being used. I think it, when it happens, it needs to happen on purpose. Because I made up my mind when my feet hit the floor that morning, I'm helping somebody today. I'm doing something good for somebody, and I'm doing it today. I'm going to give some money away. I'm going to give somebody a ride. I'm going to stop and give somebody a jump. I'm going to pay for somebody's groceries. Let me tell you something. Baby, how many times has it happened to me lately? About six? In the last month, at least six times. I think maybe eight times. I ain't joking to you. I have went to a restaurant to eat. And went to pay my bill, and they told me your bill's already been paid. Yeah. 
by all kinds of different folks in all kinds of different places. One of them's up at Sykeston. You know what I mean? What I want to say right now is, now don't think I'm bragging on myself. I hate that we even have to say that. Nobody thinks that anyway. But you know what I said, Sister Pam? After the last time, I said, all right, Lord, I got to bless somebody. I've been getting too blessed. I got to bless somebody. I got to do something for somebody. It ain't, <laughs> it ain't all about getting But he put me here to be a blessing. And if I'm full of myself, oh, y'all know I like to eat. Oh, my goodness. I could put Burger King out of business right now. I love to eat. But Brother Greg, you know what I'm falling in love with more than eating? Is being used of God. Of being a blessing to folks. Fasting is just part of the equation. Any of this make sense tonight, bro? Do you want to be used of God? Are you ready to be used of God? We're going to another level, saints. We're going places we've never been before. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. We're not going to stop till our church looks like heaven. If there's a colored person on the face of the earth, I want them in our church. Come on now. I don't know how to speak Korean or Vietnamese. I don't know how to speak Spanish. Except gracias, when they bring me my food at the Mexican place. And my family laughs at me. But if I deny myself enough, the Lord will operate through me in the universal language, which is loving people. Do you want more of God? Let's lift our hands up and just talk to him for a minute. Lord, I need more of you. I want more of you and less of me. I must decrease so you can increase, Lord. Help me to realize what you want to do. Help me to see what you want to do. I don't want to be wallowing around in my own religiousness, my own idea of what it means to be religious, Lord, but I want to be pleasing to you. I want to walk in the fullness of what you have. I want every day that I live, God, I never want to guess. I never want to have to guess or speculate, but walk in righteousness. Uh, and I know you got my back, Lord. I know that my past uh, can't raise its head up and hurt me because the glory of the Lord has got me covered, has got me guarded. Uh, you'll be my rear guard, Lord, as we go into war, as we go into battle, as we go into people's lives, uh, as we go into bad neighborhoods, uh, as we go into hospitals, uh, as we go into nursing homes, as we go into jails, uh, as we do the work of the Lord, as we go forward doing the work of righteousness, as we go forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And your Father which is in secret, and your Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. That sounds good to me.